Hey now, what's up gang gang? It's Lil Paulette and I am back with Seeking Brother Husband, Season 1, Episode 4. Welcome to the Brotherhood. Dap dap. So, we made it to Episode 4 and I just want y'all to drop down in the comments. Tell me what y'all think about the show. If you would like me to start doing lives. Um... I don't care if you guys disagree with me. Say what you got to say. Just be respectful. And I respect you back. Alright. Thank you so much for watching my video. Don't forget to hit the like button. Share the video. Comment and subscribe. Also hit the bell notification. If you want to be um, alerted to when my next video is coming out. And I just want to say this. When you hit the like button and you share the video, but I think it's mostly the like button. When you hit the like button, it puts my video in the algorithm and it helps more people be able to see my channel and see my videos. And I appreciate anybody that does it. Um, what else did I want to say? It was something else and I can't remember. Oh, don't forget about that community post, guys. I did a poll about Noble cutting the grass and I need you guys more than two people to answer please because I want to drop something once I get more engagement alright now let me stop <laughs> alright y'all let's get into it we start off with Kenya Carl and Tiger Kenya is excited that her longtime boyfriend David is coming to visit her Tiger is teasing her about David coming. Oh, look at Moonstone. Moonstone is her dog. I don't know if y'all heard my first video. My dog's name is Galaxy. Her dog's name is Moonstone. You know we sisters. You know we sisters, okay? Not real sisters, but we sisters. Not blood sisters, put it that way. Carl's, Carl, he comes out the room. He starts teasing Kenya too. Kenya explains that David couldn't handle her being with other men outside of Carl. David called her, said he was wrong, and that he changed. Carl then goes on to explain that him and Tiger have, make, have to make sure that David is good with his intentions and that Carl and Tiger ain't going nowhere, okay? <laughs> Carl explains how the previous relationship was with Kenya and David, and I also remember when she was with David. And in my opinion... It was a real roller coaster. So, like, I really hope that um, everything works out for them this time. David shows up, and Kenya is so excited to see him. She runs up to him, she hugs him, and Tiger is looking like, Who is this ninja here? <laughs> ah David hugged Carl. Then he hugged Tiger, and Kenya was extra excited. Tiger is still looking like, the fuck? Um, they engage in small talk about Kenya and David's relationship. David said he got money on his mind, so he can't fully invest in a woman right now. But Kenya is basically the only woman that he's been with that can really understand him and understand like what he's talking about as far as still being in a relationship but not being able to give all his time like um, a monogamous relationship. Kenya takes Moonstone for a walk so the guys can talk. She left Carl. She left Carl and um, Carl kind of explained like what was going on with their living situation. I'm sorry y'all I lost my train of thought. Carl explained to uh, David what was going on with their living situation. Tiger then goes on to explain to David about the ceremony deliver. Dilemma. Deliver. What? Dilemma. Carl told him honestly that his coming right now is a little bit sensitive. But David was looking like he's not trying to get involved in any tension. David said he was not prepared for that conversation. But he is not trying to cause no problems and he's not trying to get involved in no issues. Tiger, he has no issues with David, but he feels like it's suspect that David's visit came right at this time where they're going through the ceremonial issue. Mm. So I guess he feel like Kenya's using David as a distraction because 
he thinks that Kenya doesn't want to go through with the ceremony, maybe for other reasons, but I don't think he's hearing that Kenya will still have, she'll still get married, but she just doesn't want to do the ceremony because she feels like ceremonies are for families. But I'm sure we can kind of wear her down, right? We're going to wear her down, right? <laughs> All right, so we head to L.A. with Elisa and Mike. They're doing chores together, getting ready for the visit from his mom. They try to plan the conversation before she arrives. They basically are going to tell the mom that he, too, wants this lifestyle. And they're trying to keep their tone friendly and not get upset. Elisa is worried that Mike's mom may tell him to leave her. And Mike was like, at the end of the day, it's up to him. He said he chose it, and that's why he's living the lifestyle. So he don't care what his mom or anybody else has to say. I know that's right. Be a man, stand on your own. It shouldn't matter what nobody else says, especially monogamous people, especially them. Okay? They should only be talking about monogamous relationships because they don't know jack about poly. Nothing. Most monogamous people believe that it's just about sex. So keep them out the conversation if you can. Okay? Elisa said once it's out it's out and she doesn't want to have to pretend and she doesn't want to be around somebody who doesn't like her and she can't force nobody to like her talking about Mike's parents so Elisa is already dealt with it she worked through whatever and when you poly you cannot be worrying about what other people think especially monogamous people okay now sorry I smacked my lips y'all we go back to ATL with Shira Patrick and Noby <laughs> All right, Shira is still on the baby daddy hunt. She goes to meet Valentino. She's been talking to him online, and this is going to be their first time meeting. He lives in Texas. They live in ATL. He is excited and nervous at the same time. Um, they went on like a photography date, you know, and they took these pictures. It was so nice. Valentino says Shira was very transparent with him about everything as far as Polly, and this is his first time dealing with a Polly woman. They actually took a lot of cute pictures, y'all. They really did. Shara says she's going to show the pics to her children one day down the line. So they talk about the long-distance relationship. Valentino is good with the long-distance relationships. Valentino says he doesn't really know where he fits in with Shara having a husband and a boyfriend. Talking about Noby. Noble. <laughs> he doesn't. Um, so when Shara um, kind of adds in about the baby stuff. Uh, Valentino says he doesn't think he can responsibly handle raising kids right now. And Shara, she looks a little let down. She really does. But he asks her for a kiss and they share two quick pecs. Guys, don't forget to hit that like button. It helps my channel so others can see my videos and it puts me in an algorithm. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Next, we head to Asheville, North Carolina. With Kim, Dustin, and Benson. So, Kim is getting ready for her date with Ryan. That guy she was talking to at Britney's party last episode. That Benson really got upset about. Ooh, she is excited and they are going roller skating. Her husband, Dustin, said he feels a little jealous but is excited for her at the same time. And they'll see how it turns out. Kim and Ryan, they meet at the roller rink. And Ryan said that Kim's lifestyle intrigues him, but he hadn't he hasn't really had a chance to feel Dustin out intellectually or deeper yet. He said on the surface, everything seems good and he is willing to roll with that. There you go. They put on their skates and they get to skate and Kim is getting it. She is she said it's like riding a bike, so she she's enjoying Ryan's energy. She feels comfortable, she feels enticed, she feels attracted to him, and she almost fell. He caught her. You know, you know women love that. And Ryan loved it too. He said he felt like a child, like he was 10 years old, having fun again. Kim asked Ryan if he was dating and he said he keeps a pocket full. Talking about women. Okay, so are you just dating all these different women? Are you letting them know that you're dating different women? Or you're doing a monogamous thing where you pretend that you're only with one person? I wonder, I wonder, Ryan. And I'm not saying all monogamous people are like that. I'm talking about the people who say that they're monogamous and then they cheat, lie, and sneak around behind their partner's back. 
So just to get that clear. Well, I ain't mad at you, Ryan. Kim goes on to explain how Dustin feels happy for her when she goes out with other men. And that's also my experience with polyamory. Um, when I would go out with other men, the men that I was in a relationship with, they felt happy for me. And it was the same way when they went out with other women. That's just a part of being poly. When you're really poly, that's how you feel. That doesn't mean you don't get jealous and you don't have animosity or anything else. You still have those problems. It's more about how you work through it. And in polyamory, you kind of forced to work through it or you got to walk away. In monogamy, you kind of just can be mad for a little while at the person, decide if you're going to be with them or not. And if you're going to be with them, you got to just kind of accept it. But with this, with so many different people... What you can do is upset other people's households because if you're polyamorous and say that I'm married and I'm poly, I'm married, but I'm monogamous right now. But say that I'm married and I'm poly and I go out with a man and then me and him are having arguments. And then when I come home to my husband, that's going to upset my household because I'm upset about what happened with him. So in poly relationships, we kind of try to work these things out we don't kind of let them fester or pretend that they're not there because it gets bigger and it affects so many other people because depending on how many partners you have and how much you talk to them it could definitely affect everybody Alrighty. so um ryan is in the confessional saying that what happens when real feelings get involved <laughs> This tells me that he isn't up on Polly because that's all that is involved, Ryan, real feelings. It is not about just sleeping with another person. It's like, I don't know how many times we have to say that to you. <laughs> Polly is about polyamory. It's about open, loving relationships with as many partners as both people desire. It's not just sex and it's not just about a man. Having as many partners as he's desired. It's about both people being happy. Reprocity. It's not a one-sided thing. I mean, if you're polyandrous or polygamous or something, you it may be like that. For polyamory, it's not like that. Okay? So, Ryan said he isn't really sure what Kim is looking for. He asked her exactly what her intentions are with him. And Ryan is like, he ain't making out with Dustin. <laughs> Kim wants her new partner to be integrated into their family so she's explaining to him about how she really does want you know it to be about community because in my experience polyamory is about community gang gang so that's why it's not an issue with you sharing a partner because we're all in the same family basically we're all community that's a good way to describe it all right so we head on back to houston with Kenya, Carl, Tiger, and David. Kenya and David are spending time together at the apartment alone. Kenya loves she loves her some David. Boy, I remember that. This is about the time when I first met Kenya. Wow. David explains how he couldn't take her being with someone else. And Kenya explains that David started becoming possessive of her, which became a big problem. David said he changed and is more aware of himself now. And he is now willing to be like with Kenya. But I'm going to say husband number three. I know, Tiger, you ain't like that. Don't get mad at me, Tiger. Do not. But, yeah. Kenya is trying to cultivate something new with David this time. But with him still being in New York, she isn't sure how they would do, how they'll do it. Kenya wants to do a ceremonial massage and use body paint on David. And she is ready. Kenya and David paint each other's bodies, massage each other, and they get in the tub together. Aww. And y'all know what happened after that. We head on back to ATL with Shara, Patrick, Nobo, and Valentino. So Shara and Valentino end up going out to meet her husband, Patrick, at a pool hall. Shara likes him and said it's time for her to meet Babe. Aw, that's what I call my husband too, Babe. Valentino is from North Carolina, but I guess he lives in Texas. Um, Patrick prefers to fill out any men that Shara meets. They go ahead and play pool and Patrick starts asking Valentino questions like how does he feel about her being married? And Shara's like, yeah, how do you feel about me being married? <laughs> 
like Eddie Murphy. Yeah. He said he was a little weary at first, but he is with it if everyone has good intentions. They all sit down together to talk. Valentino says he is with it as long as he is accepted. Patrick does seem to like him more than my friend Noble. I noticed that. Forget you, Patrick. <laughs> That's all right, because Noble's still good. Shara then brings up the baby conversation, and Patrick straight up asks Valentino about if she was to get pregnant right now, how would he feel? He said he's still on the fence. He doesn't think he is ready for a baby yet. Shara really looks sad. She has like a little pouting look on her face. She's like, she looks like the air went out of her. She really looks let down. And I just have to say this to you, Shara. Well, at least he is responsible. He's responsible enough to tell you that he doesn't know if he can handle the responsibility of working and flying here, flying there and a kid. Like, so at least he's being honest. And that's a good thing. But Shara definitely has a positive outlook anyway. And she says this is all new. So she's still, you know, hanging in there. And all right, guys, don't forget to hit that like button. It helps my channel so others can see my videos and it puts me in the algorithm. I really appreciate you. Share the video too. Thank ya. We head on back to LA with Elisa and Mike. Mike is at the beach with his boys, Chris and Eric. They asked Mike if, if he's still being happy with being Polly. To me, it doesn't seem like they support him. Mike told him he is good. But of course, his friend thinks that it's just Elisa, um, you know, forcing Mike to uh, be good with it. That is so crazy that people really think that a person can force you to be poly. Mm, mm, mm. Woo, but I know they would never say that. The guys would never say that if it was him doing it and Elisa was the one at home. The women would say that, oh, he made her do that. And then the guys will say, oh, she made him do that just because they wouldn't do it. Just because you wouldn't do it, you don't know who would do it. And let me tell y'all something. Most people that are poly, y'all don't even know about. And you know why you don't know? Because most people are so judgmental and think that they can just say whatever they want, their opinion on it or whatever, and say all kind of hypocritical uh, judgmental things to people and that's why people don't share it with y'all that's why that's why people don't share it people really only share it with open-minded open-minded people that they don't feel like they'll be judged by and that's just what it is so you might know poly couples and don't even know that they're poly that's the sad part about it mm -mm -mm. so Mike, I guess he got tired of hearing what his friends were saying. He broke it down to them and said, Elisa didn't even know it was a such thing as being married and dating other people or having other partners. He introduced her to it. Mm. And I really feel like people just prefer you to lie, cheat, and sneak than be polyamorous. I actually had men tell me that, that I was too honest and that they can't deal with it. They just rather cheat. But that sounds about right. And his friends think that, you know, Mike is just covering up for Elisa cheating. <laughs> covering up to who? They only have a problem. They, they're the only two people who can have something to say about it. Y'all don't have no say so. His mama don't have no say so. Her mama don't have no say so. Her parents don't have no say so. So what do they have to cover it up for? Oh, my God. Crack me up. I can't with that monogamous mindset. It's so closed and so judgmental. It seems to be only open to cheating. <laughs> and only if it's a man cheating. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so let's head on back to Asheville. Kim, Dustin, and Vincent. Kim and Dustin are playing. I'm sorry. Kim and Vincent are playing golf. Kim's talking about just call me Tiger Tiger Woods, y'all. She... You know she lost that, y'all. So her and Vincent, they start talking about what was going on at the party when Vincent was being a party pooper. 
but it was actually his first time being out with her and seeing her around other guys. But, I mean, she was just talking at a party. That could have been anybody that she was talking to, any man. Like, you expect her to just not talk to men because you're around? Man, you done lost your mind. Benson said he felt Kim was avoiding him a little and he didn't feel very welcome. Even though he was the one that was all standoffish. Okay. Kim apologized that he felt that way. But Kim was just basically being sociable. She was at a damn party. So I don't know what you want her to do. And she said, if you want to, ha- if you want her, you have to accept that she is Polly. And you will see her with other men. Benson said he doesn't want to feel like he is her accessory. He's nobody's accessory. Benson doesn't think he can do it. Well, Kim lets him lets him know that she already went on a date with Ryan. When he asked, you know, did you plan on dating him? She's like, yeah. He looked a little upset, but he said he don't want to lose Kim. Benson said he needs time to process so he can see if this is what he really wants. That's a good idea, Benson. All right, we're going back to L.A. Whew, this one about to be a doozy, y'all. With Elisa and Mike. Elisa and Mike sit down with Mike's mom along with her parents. They go on a wine hike at a winery. Because Elisa was like, shoot, I brought my parents for backup. You ain't about to just be doing whatever to me or saying whatever to me. My mama here. But to be honest, if that was my mom and, and um. Mike's mom was talking all that My mother would have been said something to her She would have been quiet That chatter down Been She would have stood up And she would have got up in that A-Z-Z Okay Um, They sit down Have some wine And talk about their poly relationship with her Mike's mom said that nobody told her She saw on Facebook that they changed their relationship status And then she saw that um, Elisa had posted something about dating other people and Mike's mom thinks that he doesn't have to do it just because she is doing it. <laughs> Elisa goes on to explain how she had a connection with another man. Elisa told his mom that it was like a month and a half before she ended up sleeping with him. You know, she told the whole story. His mom added that that's not good. Then Elisa brings up how it was Mike who suggested that she be Polly. So at least so Mike's mom, sorry, Mike's mom says that it's just justified cheating to her. And I'm thinking if how what do you mean justified? If the two people that's in the relationship don't think it's cheating, who are you, granny, to decide that it is? Y'all kill me. (laughs) Alisa feels like if they are all open to it. Why is it wrong? And why does she have to limit love? And then Mike's mom says, you don't have to limit your love, but you can control yourself. (laughs) She says she doesn't think Elisa is the right woman for her son. She asks him if he would have chosen his lifestyle if she hadn't cheated on him. And that's how they end the episode. But I just... I just have to say this One thing that I need for monogamous people to think about When you have more than one brother Don't you love them? When you have more than one sister Don't you love them? More than one grandparent You love them More than one cousin You love them More than one friend You love them Why do you believe Because I know you were told this That we were all taught this bullshit Why do you believe it still to this day That you can only love one person That is not true that is the furthest from the truth. And, I mean, you could decide for yourself that you can only love one person. But you damn sure can't decide for me or anybody else. You, it, it makes no sense. You don't limit your love in any other way except for that. And it makes absolutely no sense. But, hey. All right. So, gang, gang. Don't forget to share the video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification button if you want to be notified about my next video. And I want y'all to drop down in them comments and tell me what you think. I don't care if you disagree with if you disagree with me. You can go ahead and say it. All opinions are welcome. I just don't want to be, um, I don't want no disrespect. Because if you disrespect, then I'm going to have to hit the block button. But not after I hit you back. 
Because if you come for me, I'm going to come for you. Just so you know. Alrighty. Um, I'll see you guys next week. If I get any news on sister, bro seeker, brother, husband, I will come back and do a video. And I want y'all to let me know if you want me to start doing some lives on this. Because I would love to start doing some live videos on this. But my channel don't have a whole lot of subscribers. So y'all let me know what y'all want to do. If y'all will come to my live videos, I'll start scheduling them um, the next day after um, Sister Seeking Brother. I don't know why I keep saying Sister Seeking Brother Husband. And we can start doing lives. Um, I'm also going to start. Um, uh, I got two invitations to two different panels to come on and speak about the show. I will probably do a community post to let you guys know about it. So you can know when I'm on the other channel. All right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you watching my video all the way through. Night, night, gang, gang. Peace. <laughs>